hello. Today we are here to do a mid-month check-in slash wrap-up slash whatever it is I call this video now. It's been a good reading month. I would say a little bit more mixed than the last two have been. January and February were like fantastic reading months, unusually so. So I feel like we're kind of like coming back down to earth a little bit in terms of what is typical for me. But I have definitely read some things that I've really enjoyed. I've also read some things that I was so-so or did not like. But we'll talk about the things that I can tell you about already. And I'll start by just running quickly through some of the things that I'm going to talk about later in the month. So at the end of the month, some of the books I'll talk about are Jade City by Fonda Lee, which I did as a buddy read with Leanna, and she loved this book. So if you're looking for a book that Leanna signs off on, here you go. Kira Nisi by Susanna Clark. This is also in a vlog that I'm currently working on but has not been posted yet so you will hear about this at the end of the month and in that vlog. Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. I listened to this as audio and I guess somewhat spoilers for the end of the month. I liked it so much I picked up a physical copy so there you go. Miracle Creek which wasn't my favorite. I had some mixed feelings about this and what I think of is some ableism in it, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the month. And it was also in my Cats Pick My TBR vlog. And Death and the Dancing Footman by Nio Marsh, which is in the vlog that I'm currently working on. But I'll talk more about this at the end of the month. Broken record there. And the only other one that I will talk more about at the end of the month is Storm Echo by Nalini Singh, because I've already read my arc. And I guess maybe we'll start there. I had been waiting to do my Last Guard reread until I had my Storm Echo arc. So last weekend, that was pretty much my weekend. I reread Last Guard and recorded the podcast. And then I read Storm Echo and recorded the podcast. So this, upon reread, I still stick with my four star. Really good. I feel like season two of Psy Changeling is much more consistent in its quality now that I've done the reread slash catch up in terms of most of them I really, really like. So anyway, that was a thrill. And podcast for this will be coming tomorrow. Is that right? Possibly. When when did my last one go up? The days are becoming all run together, so I can't even remember when my own podcast is coming out. Yeah. Okay, the last one came out on the 7th, so yes, the next one would come out on the 21st, which is tomorrow, right? Yeah. This podcast will be up tomorrow. And then we can talk about some books that I've already read that I'm not going to talk about more later. Let's start with the two that I don't have in physical form. So first of all, I read Set on You by Amy Lee. This comes out in May, I believe, and it is a romantic romantic comedy that actually is paced like a romantic comedy, which I find to be somewhat unusual at this point. I think actually very frequently romantic comedies are sort of sold as a rom-com, but when you get into them, what it really just means is that it's not a super dark romance, so it's not necessarily truly comedic, and it doesn't necessarily have the sort of structure that I associate with what is called, at least in movies, rom-coms. This one, I think, actually really does have that kind of structure and kind of plot set up. So I thought that was really cool. I find that that is pretty hard to come by. It did, I did personally find it funny. Humor is always very subjective, so your mileage is going to vary there. Basically, the setup is that we have a fitness influencer who is our main character. She is plus size, but she does all of her content of like stuff in the gym. And a hot new guy comes to the gym and he takes her machine when she's going to get a towel or something and he won't give it back to her. And so they have sort of like a gym rivalry that that grows from that. Then lo and behold, he ends up at a family event because his grandpa is marrying her grandma. Also, just like it's a hate to love kind of situation. Also, I guess sort of a fake incest since they're technically going to be related. I just thought that this one was really fun and really competent. I think this is a debut. And if so, I think it's a really impressive debut. And I, while I don't know that it was like my favorite book ever, so I don't think I would put it a four and a half or a five. I don't really have a ton of critiques. I will say the beginning, there's an author's note that gives some pretty good context in terms of fat phobia, body positivity stuff. And so if you don't want, that's like a lot of the thematic content of the book and a lot of the conflict ultimately ends up revolving around that. So if that's something you just don't want to read about, totally understandable. And I appreciate that there is that author's note giving you some context of what she was trying to do, but also giving you some just like content warnings about what's going on. So 
all that to say. That was a new author for me, but I would definitely read something else from her and was kind of a little bit of a surprise in terms of, I, I guess I could have put it as a surprise, in terms of how truly it followed that sort of plot structure, which I find is often not the case. The other one I don't have in physical form is Air to Love by Mink which I really have basically nothing to tell you about. Like, I don't really have anything to say about this. It's a mafia romance. After I finished Jade City, I was in the mood for a mafia romance. So I just went on Kindle Unlimited and saw whatever the latest Mink release was. It was very Mink-like. It's very over the top, very insta-love. If you don't like those things, you won't like this book. But I think for what it is, it's a pretty fun version. There's adorable kitties. What else could I want from a Kindle Unlimited Mafia romance, honestly? And then in terms of books I have in physical form, I guess all three of these are in my cat's pick my TBR vlog. So if you want like a lot of thoughts about them, you can go look there. Oh, by the way, I did, thank you for the feedback. In my last wrap up, I asked you guys if it was annoying for me constantly like referring to different videos. And the overwhelming feedback was that you find it helpful. Like the repetition is actually kind of nice. Or you just, some people were like, I just don't care. Like whatever, it's fine. So I appreciate that feedback. So I'm, I'm gonna give myself permission to not feel bad that I'm being repetitious or annoying because I'm referring you elsewhere. I will just mention that this was the winner of that vlog in terms of what book I liked best, somewhat in a surprise. That, that vlog did not go the direction I thought in terms of my feelings about the books, but this was just a really fun, again, pretty insta-love kind of historical romance set up a little bit of, I guess, a marriage of convenience trope. Um, and it was just lovely. And I love Eloisa James's writing. She's rarely a miss for me. Daughter of the Deep was fun, but a little disappointing. This is definitely my least favorite Uncle Rick book I've read to date, just because I felt like it was too short. What is in here is great and really fun and really engaging. If you like the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea type story, property, whatever, I think you will enjoy this. Um, I really liked some of the things this was doing thematically, but I just felt like it did not have enough time to really breathe fully as I would have liked. But this is definitely super fun and worth seeking out if you enjoy Uncle Rick or if you want his take on a more sci-fi-y kind of story. And then All Her Little Secrets by Wanda Morris. The writing is super good. We'll definitely look for more from this author. I think the plot went a little bonkers in the last quarter or so. So I'm not sure that it totally came together as a book, but I think it was fun. It was worth reading, at least in my opinion. And I can see that a lot of people will enjoy the main character. And I would definitely look for more from this author. This was very intriguing in terms of me looking for more from an author. Similarly, I guess, I would definitely look for more from this author, N.G. Peltier. This was the first book I've read from her. You will see this again and see more about it in my vlog that is gonna go up on Wednesday, so FYI there. I don't think I love this the way that I know some people did. Like Jess, I know absolutely, Jess Owens, she was the one who really pushed this. I know she absolutely loved this. I don't know that I fully connected with it in that way, but this is just lovely. It's lovely people, there's baking, there's an adorable kitty. It's kind of a hate to love, but sort of also like we grew up together and kind of, you know, have a past there. And uh, there's a really fun friend group in this, really good family dynamic and friend dynamic stuff. So yeah, I mean, I just think that this is super fun, super lovely. If you come to romance for just something very sweet, but with, with the sexy times, then I think that this is a great a great book to seek out. Yeah, I mean, I just, I enjoyed this, would recommend B+, not like an all-time favorite romance, and I don't know that it's like super memorable to me, but I had a very lovely time reading it while I was in it. I think that's everything I can tell you about what I've read so far. So in terms of what I'm currently reading, I am currently reading Dark Fire by Ruby Dixon, which is the finale in her apocalyptic dragon series that she's had going. And I started in it and it was just so dark. And I can, I think she's like had a hard time finishing that series because of just the state of the world. I think she started it well before the pandemic. I think that the series had potential to go on longer, but I think she is ready to be done with it. And reading this, I'm like, I do understand why. It is really, I'm enjoying it, it's good. It's just that it is the villain's love story. So it's just, it's not one of her easy breezy himbo sci-fi romances, which is what I tend to love most from her. So it is good, it's just not necessarily what I normally go to Ruby Dixon for. So I'm still, I haven't made a ton of progress there. I'd probably just need to focus and get that one 
done because it is enjoyable. It's just not as easy breezy as I tend to want from her. My current audiobook is L Work Won't Love You Back, which I am very much enjoying and will play into a commentary video I'm working on, which fortuitously there's like the most memed or used TikTok sound going around right now that plays uh, very much into some of the, the themes that I will be addressing. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. So far, this is super interesting. This has been very highly recommended. So unsurprisingly, it's really good. And then me and Jess Owens are buddy reading Beyond Good and Evil. We are using, uh, you know, Professor Google a lot to help us out, but very intrigued so far. Some He's kind of like, he's pretty sassy in some places. I don't know that I've ever read a full, have I? No, I've never read a full book from Nietzsche before. I read like excerpts of different books of his. So it's kind of exciting to just get a full argument. It's intriguing. We're hoping to do a live show once we're both done with it and talk about it. So you can look for that. And then am I technically reading in progress on anything else? I, I don't think so. Okay, so what I might read next or what I'm going to read next, I'm going to read The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo for a vlog. And I'm going to read American Heretic. Well, I'm likely gonna read this there's a chance I might pick something else. I think that this is what I'm gonna read. American Heretics by Peter Gottschalk, which is about Catholic Jews and Muslims and the history of religious intolerance in America. So I'm definitely gonna read these two for vlogging-ness. And then things that I will also probably be reading include some of some more arcs that I have, though I am very ahead. And I have also done a good job of not going too crazy, not going too buck wild with arcs this year. So I'm in a very manageable position right now. The ones that I should get to are Breathless by Amy McCulloch, which I think has already come out some places, but not everywhere. I can't quite tell from the pub dates, but the version that I have is supposed to be coming out in May and it is an isolated closed circle thriller set on a mountain and there's an avalanche and they can't get out kind of thing is what I believe is happening. So it's like a climbing story, but like an isolated thriller with it. So we'll see how I do there. Something Wilder by Christina Lauren, which is the latest from them. And that is, I think kind of like a adventure road trip romance. We'll see. And then what I just got and wasn't on my radar, but I was doing a live stream over on the World Hoppers channel, which I think will go up sometime later this week. And Jessie May was uh, recommending or saying that she was anticipating the murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. And it sounds like it is a murder mystery, like a la Agatha Christie, but with all of these different Austin characters, it's at Mr. Knightley and Emma's house, but like the Tilneys come and Wickham evidently is killed. Like it's all those characters, but a mystery whodunit. I have no idea if this is gonna be good or not, but I am very intrigued by that. So that is my third one for May that I should get to. And then I would also like to get to The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile, which comes out at the beginning of June, but I'm really excited for it. So I just kind of wanna get there. That is a locked room mystery at the Boston Public Library. So I'm excited to see how that one goes. It's been very buzzy. And then the other ones that it would be nice to get to, I've got five. So I've got Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, which is a serial killer thriller that just came out. Got a copy of my hot little hands and I am hoping that I really like this. I very much enjoyed Eight Perfect Murders, so hopefully this one will work for me as well. Two of my five star predictions that I would like to get to. I am trying to get through the rest of my current five star predictions because I have a vlogging project with five star predictions that I want to do hopefully in April and I would feel guilty if I didn't get through some more of my five star predictions before then. So maybe that's what I'll try to do at the end, at least these two, and then maybe also one more so that I feel good about having a fresh batch. That sounds like a plan. Uh, Empire Sand by Tasha Suri, which is a fantasy romance that I've had that I know a lot of my friends have really loved. And then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which is a YA mystery thriller set at a boarding school, I think, that I've also heard great things about. So hopefully those two five star picks 
prediction wise. And then uh, a physical arc I need to get to for April still that I'm excited about is The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. This is a fake dating at a wedding trope and it is the sequel to The Worst Best Man which I really enjoyed. And then I would also like to read Flamebringer by L. Catherine White so that we can just close out this trilogy and also just because I do enjoy this series a lot. I like this world and I'm looking forward to this. So hopefully that will all happen. And I think that's honestly probably plenty to get me through the rest of the month. So those are my what I've read, what I'm currently reading, and what I might read next. Let me know how your reading month is going. Let me know what you thought of any of the books that I talked about. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!